I just sort of got on a bit of a roll that summer and I was in great form. So that's what everyone wants to do is get picked when you're in really good form. We had the Australia A series. The second round of matches came around and I did get selected for Australia A and um, did, did reasonably well in those games. And then all of a sudden there was a bit of thought around myself being selected for the, for the Adelaide test match. And I was thinking, oh, there's no way. Because at the start of the summer, I hadn't thought about playing test match cricket for Australia during that summer. So it all happened quite quickly. We were told after a, a Shield win, I'd forgotten who we'd beaten, but, uh, we were, but Bluey and I were told that we're in the next test site. And uh, yeah, we've always been great mates. And, and uh, for us both to uh, get selected together, it was just a, an amazing week for us. So. Obviously there's nerves and stuff there, but I think playing on your home ground definitely helps. Um, I'm not really a nervous type, but uh, it was an enormous, enormous day that was coming up. You know, you get your jumpers, you get your shirts, you get everything else, and, and I remember getting two baggy greens. Yeah, I think I might have a couple at home as well. Um, yeah, we, we didn't have any presentation back then. Yeah, I remember getting two baggy greens, and I thought, oh, well, that's just the norm, but you know, I've since learned then, since then, that you know that's not the case. I've got one that's been worn for 46 Test matches, and I've got another one at home that's absolutely brand spanking new. So, um, yeah, I got the got the bonus one. I wasn't returning it. Don't worry. I wasn't going to put my hand up and go. Ah, I got an extra one. Over the top, but he's out. Greg Blewett in the covers. So the new boys have combined to take a wicket. McIntyre's first in Test cricket. Phil De Freitas trying to go over the covers to the higher, loopier delivery. Didn't get it very well in the meat of the bat. Greg Blewett in the end had to come in desperately. He looked like he was going to take it comfortably. Had to scramble forward, took quite a good catch. It was always on with the Freitas in this mood and McIntyre threw it wide. He went after it, didn't get, quite get hold of it. And Greg Blewett took the straightforward catch. The wide for Peter McIntyre, his first wicket. The end of the Freitas, 21, 7, 334. I think, uh, I think our first innings, um, uh, we ended up making 400 and something, I think 426. Uh, we'd gone past their score by about 40 or 50 runs. But uh, we, um, I think Bluey was 91 not out the, the night before. Finally this third day comes to an end. The day where Greg Blewett has made his debut as an Australian batsman, he's 91 not out and has played beautifully. I must admit, I didn't sleep that well that, that night because um, if you have a look at my history, it's, I've got a lot of 90s, whether that's first class or, or test 90s as well. So um, I wasn't the most uh, um, calm person throughout the 90s. I took Bluey to the general Havelock here, the heavy we used to call it, and um, the night got away from us a little bit, but uh, we probably stayed out um, a little bit later than we should have. and. Uh, we came in the next day and Bluey 91 not out and pretty relaxed after a night out. You know, it was, it was business as usual that next morning, which that's how I had sort of envisaged that we were sort of trying to build a bit of a lead. We'd had a, I'd had a good partnership with Ian Healy. He was 70 odd not out overnight. So the next morning was about, you know, getting the team into a winning position and, and trying to build on our lead. And yeah, all of a sudden we, we lost three quick wickets. The Hills made a 70. Got him. Guy and he walks, umpire Parker doesn't put the finger up, here he goes. That was interesting. And then um, I think uh, Warney made only one or two as well. It's gone, straight down the throat of Thorpe. Second look at Graham, it's Fraser. Australia 7 for 405. A big drive there from Shane Warne. Thick edge and straight, straight to Thorpe and slip. Uh, Flemo got a, a zero, a naught, which uh, he was fairly consistent at. Out, caught behind. Yeah, it's another wicket for Devon Malcolm. Coming out for Ducks, that's drama here as far as Greg Blue is concerned. This Australia now eight for 406. I started getting a few messages through that um, Craig McDermott wasn't at the ground. He'd sort of had complications. They wanted to get him checked out, so he was not at the ground. So I was elevated up the batting order from 11 to 10 and of course come out and uh, I think Bluey was still needed another six or seven to get to his his ton and he's make his first hundred well, on the boot, which it was. Macca came out and his I could just see his eyes. I mean, they were just spinning. Um, so 
and he was facing De Devon Malcolm, who was who was fairly fast bowler. I don't know who was more nervous, Bluey or I, that you know, Bluey wasn't going to get to the hundred, uh, or, or me facing Devon Malcolm. So, you know, it was it, it became pretty hairy. It was like we've got to get Bluey over the line here, and uh, I don't know what had confidence he had in me. Probably not much. And having known and played with Peter a lot, I knew what sort of batsman he was. So I, I knew that I'd had to get the runs fairly quickly. This time he gets it through the gap, that'll go for at least three. He's back for two, and he picks up three. No, he's happy, he wants to strike. He's got no confidence at all in Peter McIntyre. He's on 96. Anyway, Devon Malcolm was bowling, and uh, I tried to be pretty relaxed about it all. You know, when he first came out to bat, it was, oh, I'm here for you, mate, I'm here for you. You know, for as long as you want, you know, I'm going to get you to your 100, so I'm going, oh yeah, great, Mac, that, that'll be fantastic, just hang in there. So that was generally the gist of the conversation. And uh, after a, a facing it over at Devon, I came up to Bluey and I said, Bluey, you're going to have to get on with it because I'm not here for long. I cannot see the ball out of his hand. Yeah, some of the scenes were sort of quite comical in trying to, to get to 100. I, I've got memories of Bluey trying to charge the bowling and, and hit it oh, over cover. And he, he missed it once or twice. That's nerves, isn't it? That's pressure. That was a foolish stroke. There's two men out. He's on 94. He's lost Healy, Warren and Fleming. And he's charged and he's lucky not to get an edge. I played some fairly rash shots and you know people were probably looking up at the scoreboard going, well they're only eight down, you know, there's nothing, you know, there's no need to do anything too stupid. Well, we've got some sensational news for you. The reason why he's really going for it here is he probably knows that uh, Craig McDermott has been rushed to hospital with stomach cramps. And uh, he's gone down there for x-rays apparently, some precautionary x-rays. Now they're trying to get McDermott back to the ground. Uh, in order to get out there and uh, just in case he's needed. You know, that was the reason. I just thought Macca was my last chance and um, it wasn't going to last too long. Angus Fraser. He's gone for it. It'll be two, that'll be the 100 for sure. It's gone down the third man. What a magnificent effort by Greg Fluid. Superb performance. Mum, Dad and his sister there, look at those smiles. He finally got there and uh, I, I, was, I was knocked over. And he's knocked him right over. And Craig McDermott did get to the ground and came out and did, did bat, but at the time, um, as far as I was aware, he wasn't going to bat. Yeah, I know Bluey's dad, or every time I see him, he says, you're my hero. Every time he says, you're my hero, Macca. And uh, I said, why is that, Bob? He said, you got my son to 100. So yeah, so it was great.